I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Wednesday, July the 24th. Good morning. Pat Benatar's Heartbreaker, the second greatest rock song ever called Heartbreaker. I mean, sorry, Led Zeppelin's got the best. Stones don't have a bad one. That's not bad. Oh, man, am I going to bump Pat to third? Yeah. I, uh, sorry, Pat. I mean, uh, hey, top three is great. You're yeah. still on the metal stand at the end of the day. <laughs> got a bronze. All right. It's it, a bronze or a, a silver, maybe bronze at worst. Right on, Pat. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a Hall of Fame resume, and, and Heartbreaker's a big part of that. It is Wednesday. It is July 24th. It is about 6 a.m., so let's quit dawdling. How about your top five at six? Here's the things you need to know to get your day off on the right foot. Number five, Yellowstone National Park yesterday. Quite a panic yeah. when uh, a what they call a localized hydrothermal explosion <laughs> took place at Biscuit Bas- Basin. 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 Biscuit Basin. <laughs> Five Bays. times, really fast. Blazing Basin. It was a blazing basin. Biscuit Basin, 10 a.m. yesterday. A whole bunch of people are in Yellowstone, as they do. You know, there's geysers. Yeah, they oh, blow yeah. up, and they spout out a bunch of hot water and steam. Uh, right near the uh, uh, the explosion originated at the Black Diamond Pool, very famous part of the park. There's a boardwalk that surrounds the basin, and it, this thing just exploded. This was not yeah. like, hey, there's an old geyser. This looked like the beginning of the end of the world. <laughs> Um, everybody, you have a lot of videos. Everybody's running to safety as this is happening. Yeah, I, I wish we could uh, show it to you if you haven't seen it. It, it, it. No serious injuries reported at all. Uh, but um, when that kind of heat comes out of the middle of the earth, just run. That, remember, put your phone down and run. <laughs> That's what they did. Here's some audio. Keep going, keep going. We are getting out of here. I only had to bleep out about four or five Effenheimers and yeah. uh, Shiites in there as well. Uh, um, you've been to Yellowstone, I assume? Many, many times. Many, many times. You've seen yeah. those geysers? You, you, you've been around these things when they blow? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, love me a geyser. In fact, there was a geyser. I'm trying to remember the name of it. There's so many damn geysers over there that mm-hmm. uh, there was one that hadn't gone off for 50 years. It started going off, and it was like bigger than Old Faithful. Oh, really? Like 150 feet in the oh. air. So we went down and saw this one. Didn't witness anything like this big boom right here, but uh, now that I know everyone's okay, it's fun to see tourists run sure at Yellowstone. Yeah, you know? um, I did see... The there is a volcano in Yellowstone. It's not. Uh, there's no indication it's about to blow. But if it does, you'll know because they say ash will cover two thirds of the continental United it's States. It's not a volcano. It's a super volcano. It's actually oh, the really? largest deposit of magma uh, underneath the Earth. It's the largest inactive volcano on the planet right now. And if it blows, we're in trouble. Minnesota's in the light red zone. Like we just, uh, you know, just like wipe out half the population okay. of Minnesota. All right, Yellowstone, chill out. Okay, <laughs> just. just Take it easy. Number right. four on your top five and six. Uh, millennials, the children amongst us, apparently they get the most sleep. Well, they're not the children. What, what's a millennial now? Like I'm 30 a millennial. You're a millennial. I'm a millennial. Yeah. You're not getting more sleep than no. most people. You're up yes. early. Uh. Um, the, as far as who gets the most <laughs> sleep, millennials, 85% of millennials say they get six or more hours. Gen X. Right here, baby. Yeah. Five or fewer. We get the least amount of sleep, right. and we're damn proud of it. That's well, called the latchkey generation. A lot of those millennials sleeping on the job, though. They get a lot of their sleep at work. That's very true. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I see uh, over there, right? That's, oh, yeah. that is, that's the laugh of acknowledgement, <laughs> yeah. ex- re- recognition, and acceptance. We have to wake her up like four or five times every yep. morning. Yeah, It's amazing. Um, number good. three on your top five at six, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, which I saw once in Florida and literally stood in front of it and took a, got a picture taken like I, everybody else. I did a selfie. It pulled into a radio yeah. station I was at once. A little disappointed when I jumped inside. I thought it would be like yeah. a Willy Wonka Wiener thing, yeah, but no. no, it's just it's a, a regular RV kind of thing. It deal. is. I'm like, there's not even any, you know, I expected the rollers with the dogs and the whole thing and the condiments. None of that. Well, the Wienermobile uh, had a rough day. Uh, driving through Chicago, the driver hit another car, lost control, overcorrected, <laughs> and ended up flipping the vehicle on its side. Not unlike Super Bowl Sunday 1998, I did the exact same thing with a brat. Went to put it from the grill into the bun. <laughs> already had too much mustard and got a little carried away. It's- and then I overcorrected. Yeah. It started to fall to the left and ended up for like four feet on the floor. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, the top heavy, those brats. <laughs> I remember the Wiener Mobile. It was only about, uh, here I go, 10 or 15 years ago, crashed into a house in Milwaukee. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, I don't think they, they don't look like they're made to drive.
drive. You know what I'm no, saying? They no. must be a, a little tricky. Yeah, that that sounds like something that there was like so he was pissed off at a brat or an Italian sausage that lived in that house. Maybe it was. <laughs> who, who knows what was going on? <laughs> Number two in your top five and six, uh, the second to last torchbearer during the Olympic ceremonies, opening ceremonies on Friday will be. Snoop Dogg. Hell yeah. If he Hell does, yes. If he oh, doesn't light funny. up a blunt with that <laughs> yeah. torch, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> I mean, and it should it should be the size blunt. Like, he should roll it with, like, an, a, a, it should be like as if he rolled it with oh, a diaper. Like, yeah. that big. Like, it should be bigger <laughs> yeah. than his head. Like yeah. a big, you know, wrapped in gold foil or something. I don't know. Snoop, let your imagination mm-hmm. go. And pass have, it. Have some fun with it. I like that, uh, the... The Frenchies called on Snoop Dogg. Uh, they also called one of their uh, half French. That would be the Quebec Aqua legend Celine Dion will be singing a song during the ceremony. She's being paid two million dollars for one song. I thought she had the stiffness disease. What is it? Uh, the- yeah, she's from Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, she has that. Uh, what is it called? Oh, the- stiff. It's like stiff body disease. Stiff it's body something. disease. Yeah, or stiff stiff person syndrome. Yeah, SPS. Again, yeah, we knew that. We've watched you for 30 yeah. years. Finally, uh, your top five at six. Number one, uh, side to the road in Faribault on Sunday, there's a standoff with police. A gentleman named Donald Ray Sanderson from Minneapolis. Well, they pulled him over and found 44 pounds of methamphetamine in his car. Ooh. 44 pounds. Well, there's going to be a meth shortage. All those small towns out in Minnesota trying to, you know, celebrate meth days coming up here in August are going to go without. Um, I I kind of feel like, it, it, call me crazy, but like in, in, in um, season one of Breaking Bad, the big deal was when Walt sold four pounds. To yeah. Tico. Yeah. And that was like, oh my God, four pounds. Four this guy had amateur. 44 pounds in his trunk. That's enough. That's enough to keep us up for days. Yeah, I guess it was coming from forever. California, and he gets out and he fires a shot into the ground with his handgun there in front of oh, the coppers. The, oops. Uh, but my favorite pull of the trigger was the one when he stuck it to his chin, they said, and pulled the trigger and lost control of the gun. It fell out of his hand. Yeah, there's Awkward. a whole lot going on there. Uh, yeah. th- seriously, there's a. It's, it's one of the craziest stories. We'll probably have to go back in a little later because there's so much to report. It's kind of mind-boggling. In the meantime, perfect time right now to look back. On this day in 1983, one of the most famous and most bizarre moments in baseball history, which think about that. That's yeah. a lot of history. Yankee Stadium, the Royals are trailing 4-3 to three in the top half of the ninth inning. George Brett hits a two-run home run off of Goose Gossage to essentially seal the game as long as they can finish the bottom of the ninth. Mm -hmm. Billy Martin, Yankees manager, says to the ump, I think he has too much pine tar on that bat. (laughs) The umpire uh, measures the bat next to home plate uh, and then looks over at the dugout and points at George, uh, uh, excuse me, at George Brett and says, you're out. Uh, George Brett races out of the dugout like a completely insane person. To make his point. And gets in the face of the umpires, and they scream, and they scream, and they scream, and he's eliminated from the game. And it's one of the great, I mean, of all the temper tantrums and baseball fights, probably the most famous image is Brett screaming out of that dugout, literally and figuratively, right in that umpire's face. Uh, By the way, the the Royals then filed an official uh, appeal. And they replayed the ninth inning a month later, and the Royals won the game, as it turned out, for the record books. <laughs> that was weird. I wish they hadn't done that. Never but. underestimate the power of leaving your dugout. They called George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And He's steaming mad. He steaming out. mad. Yeah, it was, it was insane. Th- this is 1983, long yeah. before anything was quote-unquote viral, and everybody talked about this for a solid week. It's the best thing to happen to that baseball season. Billy Martin, the worst thing to happen to baseball, ever. Uh, pretty much, uh, the, although it was a pretty good season for me because my Orioles won the World Series oh. and haven't done it since. Big movie reviews, the latest news on rock stars, celebrities, and world-class athletes, and plenty of juicy love nuggets, too. We're heading west for Mike Evans' Hollywood Report on the KQ Morning Show. Hey, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Zeb. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Hey, I got to tell you, I have a huge, huge report for you this morning. And we start off with a true life, love, hate relationship between their politics and their religion, or lack thereof, their child raising and their other differences. 
father, daughter, John Voigt and Angelina Jolie. You can stick a fork in them. They are done. Yesterday, John Voigt was talking about his daughter, Angelina Jolie. He said, quote, everything considered, she really is a very ignorant person, and that's very, very sad. End quote. Angelina has told her dad that he will never see his grandchildren, which is also very, very sad. On a much happier note, Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively have had their fourth child and named him or her Olin, O-L-I-N, Olin. They haven't shared the sex of the new baby with us yet. Uh, And regarding Ryan Reynolds, a little heads up. On Friday, I will review Ryan Reynolds' new movie, Deadpool and Wolverine. Also on Friday, we'll do a preview of the Olympics that kick off on Friday. And a little scoop, I hear that Celine Dion and Lady Gaga will sing together at the opening Olympic ceremonies. That, that should be really special. Oh, oh, speaking of Lady Gaga, I want you to write down October 4th because that is the date the biggest movie of the year will be released. At least in my opinion, it's Joker, Fale Adu. Joker, Fale Adu, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. And insiders tell me that both are guaranteed Oscar nominations. I saw the first trailer of basically Joker 2 last week, and it is beyond, beyond amazing. And a TV nugget tonight on HBO, the first part of a four-part documentary called Charlie Hustle and the Matter of Pete Rose. You know, I've known Pete Rose a long time, way back when I worked with the Dodgers, and there's a picture of Pete Rose and myself that I put up on my website, evansradio.com, if you want to check it out. Uh, Look, I like Pete Rose. And he is certainly one of the greatest baseball players of all times. But Pete Rose's story could be as simple as, I met the enemy and it was me. And the documentary explains. Finally, I keep hearing that P. Diddy, the indictment and eventual arrest is coming any day. When I find out more, I will let you know. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Mike Evans, see you. The Mike Evans Hollywood Report, weekdays on the KQ Morning Show. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Guns N' Roses, sweet child of mine. Uh, If not the, it is certainly on the short list of... Uh, of ultimate 80s songs, okay? I mean, oh, yeah. the 80s as a decade, you either immediately think uh, Born in the USA or you think Joy Division, Love Will Tear Us Apart, depending on what part what? of the world you were in. Like, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're either going to go, oh, it was it was Don't Stop Believing," or it was How Soon Is Now. I mean, right. like, depending on your experience in the 80s, there are songs. What is the ultimate 80s oh, song? God, I, mean, I would was... love to hear. A rich decade of hits. That would be hard to define immediately. Whenever anyone mentions 80s music, my first thought goes to the summer of 82, because there I was, 16 years of age. You know, mm-hmm. just that sweet spot of life. You don't have to worry about anything in front of you, and it's all behind you. Asia, heat of the moment. The su- it's it's oh, summer God, right now, huge. so it would have been uh, July 24th, 1982. I would have already heard that song 500 times, and I'm not even exaggerating. Just yeah. on the radio Every 15 minutes, burning the bridge. Same same thing in 83 with Every Breath You Take, now that you're saying okay. that. Like summer songs of yeah. that era that you just heard everywhere. Journey's uh, got a pile of sure. them. Sure. I'm curious, what's the ultimate 80 song? Hit us on the uh, text line, 616-51-989-ROCK, KQ Talking text line, or on the Facebook page, wherever you want to go. But let, you know what? Later in the show, let's see what we think. What's the ultimate 80 song? Mm. Speaking of Guns N' Roses, Slash has a new blues album out. It's called Orgy of the Damned, and it's great. Different singer on every tune yeah he and it's it's fantastic um and uh he's got a festival tour going on right now called the serpent festival you can win a trip for two to go see this show in nashville you'll attend an exclusive slash soundcheck experience plus you'll get an autographed gibson guitar and the new album text the national keyword experience right now to 95819 to enter for a chance to win uh we mentioned this briefly at the top of the show 
on 35 near Faribault on Sunday, there was an armed standoff on the side of the highway with police. A guy from Minneapolis, Donald Sanderson, 44-year-old gentleman, was on his way back, apparently, from Los Angeles when he was pulled over. Um, officers found a lot of things, like, gosh, I don't know, 44 pounds of methamphetamine in his car. <laughs> he was 44 years of age, 44 pounds of meth. Yeah. I get it. I see what well, he was doing there. Well over a million dollars street value. I, 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 yeah. I'm, you know, that which just goes to show how much meth there is, because back in the day, that would have been $10 million. <laughs> this stuff's getting cheaper. Well, we had a story a couple of years ago where they busted mm-hmm. someone making meth in a porta potty on a golf course. Oof. I mean, it's, yeah, like, Probably cook some up here in the cafeteria during a break if you need. Um, The Olmstead County Sheriff's Office uh, found out, got a tip that he was on his way back from California. This is a guy they already, he was already a person of interest. They were already keeping tabs on him. If he got ratted out or the cops in Cali just said he's headed your way. I guess so. They'd been investigating for other narcotics related crimes. Uh, (laughs) They they pulled him over, as I said, uh, by utilizing stop sticks. I mean, they were, they were, they wanted this guy to get over. He pulled over. Sunday afternoon, um, a woman got out of the car with him. She tells the officers, hey, he's got a gun in that car. Um, And so uh, they say, hey, drop your weapon. Dude gets out of the car. Instead of dropping the gun, he just fired around into the ground right near his own feet. Like, I guess, to show this thing works. Yeah. Um, should have been over right then, but there I, was a, yeah. it certainly should have been over right then. They shut down the interstate and had negotiations for several hours while this guy uh, would basically barricaded himself and was trying to. He attempted, literally attempted at one point to shoot himself and was not able to pull that one off. <laughs> right, I already lost control of the gun. Butterfingers, don't you hit Crazy. that when you're trying he, to blow your head there off? There was a drone overhead. He tried to shoot. Then he tried to go for himself. <laughs> Jump, l- drop the firearm, and then and then after hours decides we're just going to run into an open field. Oh, well, hours? What is he on meth? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a canine unit on hand. <laughs> you know, tracked him down real fast. Don't outrun the canines. Got do him you? down real fast. The car was searched. There were needles. There was white powder. There were pills. Again, forty-four pounds of meth, along with a bunch of other types of drugs. This is just a st- substantial amount of uh, contraband. Yeah. Coming right on into Minnesota. I'm sorry it's not going to make out to all those small town festivals in August. There's going to be a little bit of a meth shortage. Uh, he's looking at 135 years yeah. in the big house for this, yeah. uh, which fully checks out to me. Of all the reasons to get stopped, so you're on 35W, that doesn't stop very often. You shut down an interstate like that, that's a pretty big deal. But uh, of all the reasons to get stopped, nobody wants to see a gruesome accident, no. you know, innocent people hurt. That's yep. awful. But this might have been kind of front row stuff. I mean, a standoff, don't mind if I do. I'm up on the hood watching this, mm-hmm. you know. But, uh, all right. I like the fact that he tried to blow his head off and he dropped his gun. Um, yeah, that's a... Uh, that's, uh, He's oof. got the shakes, you know, that meth. That's no good for you. Shaky, shaky. Eggs and bakey, as they say. <laughs> um, Pot's legal. You don't need meth anymore. Stop it. That's junk. That'll kill you. I've uh, never... I've, you I, don't want to kill I ne- someone. There was, I've never done speed of any sort. Never, no? Never. I, uh, I saw it uh, a yeah. few times. I've watched people who thought they were going to do a little bump of cocaine and someone actually... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Speed. And then, you know, 48 Zoom. hours later, they're still going, hey, so anyway, when's this going to be over? Yeah. I just... I mean, not only does it make you manic, I understand, yep. um, but uh, then the sleep deprivation, it only gets worse and worse and worse. And uh, pretty soon you find yourself trying to beat the brain out of your best friend. Uh, okay. I'll take, I'll take your word for story it. I read <laughs> a story one, you read one time. One time. These things happen. Uh, these things happen to the best of us. Uh, I, I just saw a text, uh, Purple Rain, uh, going back to Ultimate 80s songs. Yeah. Well, that's, that's hard to one. argue. Hard to argue. Man, I, there's a there's a Mount Rushmore that instead of four has about 40, and I think we'll probably fill all of those. <laughs> like I said, depending on your experience and who you were hanging with and what age you were, your Ultimate 80s song is going to have it. There's going to be a lot of variance in that list, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody thinks about that one. Um, there's been an awful lot of shark attacks as of late, I'm noticing in the... in the. And yeah. if you remember, 
Um, this is I, I, I'm not I'm not saying there may be a harbinger of things to come. In the summer of 2001, there was a lot of shark attacks. Yeah, that's right. And, and then 9/11 happened, and suddenly we all forgot. Well, all the sharks—they're still there. They never go away. There are always sharks way closer to you in the ocean than you think there are. Um, down in the Florida Panhandle this summer, there's been a lot of attacks, and every yeah. time there's another one, they show overhead helicopter pictures of beaches that are full of people. And guess what? Like 100 feet off the shore, there's a bunch of sharks. Yeah, they're always there. It's just usually they stay away from humans. But now. Now it seems like there's a bit of an uptick, and I think we know why. And if you're wondering why the sharks are pissed off at humans, uh, you're not going to want to miss this. It's uh, it's it's really <laughs> not as safe to get back in the water as you might think. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Wednesday, July 24th. Um, hit the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989, or the KQRS Facebook page. We're asking, what's the ultimate 80s song? Uh, personal note, I think we just heard my ultimate 80s song, Hard to Handle by the Black Crows. It <laughs> changed my life in the 90s, but we recorded it in 89. Oh, did you? So, in my world, it's from the 80s, and boy, right. did it make a difference. Right. So, um, there yeah, you that's have your it. world. I clear, I'm going to put the Crows right there in the 90s. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, the record came out in 90, but, but I had a six month jump on the rest of the world with that one. I mean, it's not a matter of which band, it's just which Duran Duran song. <laughs> to go with here. I don't. Do, do, Why? Well, do, 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 do. <laughs> Got to be Union of the Snake. Of yeah, course. Say a prayer. You know, at Duran Duran. Wow. What a yeah. pull. Union of the Snake. <laughs> Union of the Snake. Duran Duran, that was the band you liked because girls liked them. I remember that's why I liked Ario Speedwagon. Clearly going through a Def Leppard, ACDC mm -hmm. rat phase or whatever yeah. uh, when High Infidelity came out in 82. I think that was 82 again, but all the girls liked it, so... I was getting that cassette. Oh, this? Oh, it's just Ariel Speedwagon. That's no big deal. In my, Walkman. my freshman year in college, a guy walked into my dorm room. Uh, he, he was a freshman as well, and I still know him. We became friends. Uh, he was a, he played soccer at the university. He was a bit of a stud athlete type of guy. And I had posters of all my favorite bands, and he'd never heard of any of them because I was so cool that nobody had heard of the <laughs> bands I liked. And uh, he said, what's R.E.M.? What's the English beat? What is all this crap? And I said, why? What do you like? He goes... My favorite band's Duran Duran. And I literally looked at him, I go, that can't... No. You're, no, you're a dude in college. That doesn't work. He goes, what, Duran Duran's awesome. And I literally said, you need to leave this room. Yeah, you can't... I didn't make any sense to me. You Off can love head. Duran Duran in seventh grade. Yeah. Uh, because Mary Jo Kopechny loves uh, Duran Duran. But you cannot, like... Yeah, that can't be your favorite band in college. What a pull. Mary I, Jo Kopechny. Why did that well, pop into my head? I, you know, different, we're, 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 we're mixing up uh, eras, but that's okay. But if yeah. she, had she been around in the 80s, she would have absolutely right, loved Duran Duran. for sure. You know that as well as I do. The 80s are known for a lot of great music, also known for a whole lot of cocaine. The cocaine decade of the 80s. I mean, we you know, we started with Scarface, we finished with Goodfellas, a lot of coke in the middle. Um, uh, but here's a little something that, that we find kind of fascinating. Not great news for our uh, for, for those of us who like to go off into the ocean. Uh, uh, experts, marine biologists in Brazil have been testing um, a, a, an awful lot of uh, predators in the ocean, a lot of animals. They bring them in. They want to th see what's happening. Free-ranging predators, by which I mean sharks, are all apparently, as of the last few years, testing positive when they're caught off the coast of Rio de Janeiro for cocaine. Can we just pause for a moment and recognize that our greatest nightmares are all coming true? Yep, that's cocaine it. shark. It's You've bad enough they're already sharks. Right. You're a shark. I'm a human. You can hurt me. Now you're high and just angry? Wow. Move over, cocaine bear. Uh, cocaine sharks. I mean, this movie's being filmed as the story, uh, the wet, uh, the ink is yep. still wet on this story. Yeah, it's being filmed. Co Hell with uh, Sharknado. 
We have uh, yeah. cocaine sharks now. Mm-hmm. Um, all these sharks they've been testing, their liver and muscles are all, they're going into their organs and muscles, and they're all testing positive for, not just for, tra- it's, these are not trace amounts. These are high levels God. of cocaine. That's the good stuff, yeah. Multiple theories on how this is happening. Um, illegal labs, where people <laughs> where they're manufacturing cocaine, they could just be dumping, I don't know if there's excess or if there's just. Well, and they're always uh, trying to float dump. bales in. You know, I we know so. that old routine where they, the cartels will just try and float them mm-hmm. in the shore, and hey, if half of them make it, there's still, I guess there's quite a profit margin on cocaine. I, I believe there is. They're saying it's it's not so much, the first thought a lot of people had is, well, you always hear about people on boats being chased and they, they just throw their stash overboard to avoid, yeah. mm-hmm. or it's or, or boats sink that are full of cocaine, and they're like, no, that's really not it, um, because that would be a concentrated amount in a small part of the ocean. This Because these are wide-ranging, free-ranging animals, they're oh. like, it's just all throughout the ocean. Maybe the you know there's all these orcas off the coast of Spain and Portugal that have been smashing into boats. Yeah. Ye- yesterday, off the coast of New Hampshire, a, a large I don't know if it was a humpback whale, some kind of whale, just just breached and and took over like a 25 foot boat. <laughs> Literally, just ju- jumped out of the water to sink a boat. Two people on the boat jumped in. They yeah. were rescued without injury. Uh, the be- there, that's a video. If you just Google boat New Hampshire whale, you'll see it. The best part is the guy. Sh- Shooting the video is on another boat, yeah. And the person on his boat with him, he goes, "Oh my God, look at that!" And then you see it occur to him, "I better get the hell yeah, out of here." And then that guy down. grabs the wheel, like, "Holy, <laughs> shit, let's go!" Um, it, it looks like the the whale's probably just doing a breach, just a little yeah. close to the boat. You know, when you were a little kid and you'd have your rubber ducky and your boat. We had a boat in the tub with us, and then you would just hit it with your finger, and it would topple. And yeah, that, sure. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it's a fairly decent sized boat. Whale Pro- fun. Yeah, probably. 30 foot boat or something, maybe a 40, I don't know. And this thing, uh, yeah, just uh, bobs like a little toy boat. So sharks are, are partying and doing blow like it's Studio 54, yeah. and whales are just having fun like it's a bathtub. <laughs> well, there's a, there was a story not long ago about uh, they're finding fish, game fish, our walleye, our crappies, these sort of fish are testing high for levels of Prozac and Ritalin. People are flushing, oh my God. Oh people my are God. flushing these old, their old pills uh. down the toilet, I guess. And, uh, and getting into the water supplies, you and know, the fish are eating it, and I'm eating walleye, and I'm feeling very balanced and well-adjusted. When you and I went to the fishing open, and, yeah. uh, the opener, and, and we caught a bunch of walleye. Still in my freezer. I, I By the way, I had a sense that one, the first fish I caught that day, I was like, <laughs> he just gave up. Just had that glassy he, eye. He, he, saw the, he saw the hook and went, you know what? What's, I don't, it? What, what's it even matter anymore? Because he probably had been doing fine, but yeah. his, he, his Prozac stream ran out, and he was yeah. just like, I don't even know why I'm still here. His friends are like, Wally, don't. He's like, I'm doing it. Wally, I said, it's I a can, hook. I don't care man, I, anymore, I, I man. I said this when I pulled him up. I said, this guy, I sense his ennui. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel it. Um, there's it. a bunch of sheep in Greece who are feeling uh, much better than my sad walleye yeah. uh, because uh, apparently an entire flock of sheep got into... Uh, the product from a cannabis farm, <laughs> uh, and they were chowing down. Um, a flock of sheep found 200 pounds of marijuana. Wow! Now I, I I don't know much about sheep, but I know they can graze. I know they can just keep on eating grass and such. Uh, they found a greenhouse. Medical, excuse me, medicinal cannabis was being grown. They went in for 200 pounds of weed. He said the sheep were jumping higher than the goats, which never happens. Sheep <laughs> leaping around, running around, a lot of energy, and apparently just in a great mood. It must have been a sativa, probably, I think. Must have been the sativa strain, sure. Yeah, um, yeah your sheep, uh, your, your, I mean, that's, 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 I'd, I'd like to see that. I'd love to uh, I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get Chauncey stoned. But if you got some sheep or goats in the field, I'd watch them get stoned. Animals getting messed up is kind of funny. There's those plum trees out there on the Serengeti. I'm guessing because it was a bunch of uh, African animals, and they're on YouTube. You can find it. But these plums ferment apparently. Oh sure. And these animals will all uh, close in, yeah. and, and they just get hammered. Really? It's just like a Jungle Book bachelor party mm-hmm. out there. They're just hammered and stumbling around. And one time, Cody, the old farm dog, our old farm 
dog, Cody, uh, got into a box of beer, Old Milwaukee, I believe. And we came outside and someone had set it by the stairs there. And there was uh, just a froth there in the in the front yard and beer cans with a dog canine you know molars punched into it everywhere <laughs> and Cody is just passed out right in the middle of it oh, just out cold really yeah we, we woke him up we're like Cody do we take him to the vet is he okay and dad's like he's gonna be all right and he was just staggering around uh, Cha- Chauncey has tasted beer. Um, he did not appreciate it. He went in for one lick and then just kept on moving. Right? Was it more well, of a wine? Was it an IPA? Pop. Maybe it was, it's just, just too, too hoppy. Bitter. Yeah, too hoppy. Too hoppy for him. Um, <laughs> I, I yeah, I don't recall. I've seen I have I have seen a man shotgun with a lung full of weed a dog. <laughs> <laughs> that that was kind of uncomfortable for everybody in the room. It was like, yeah. no, actually, hey, we were having fun, and then you got weird. Uh, yeah, watch this. <sighs> no. Like no, and no. the dog. I don't. Nothing really happened that we were aware of. The dog just. Well, but the fact that I didn't see the dog again probably tells me he went to bed. Right. They can um, handle it, but don't do it. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen. I've certainly seen the ill effects of a dog getting a hold of a couple of candy bars. <laughs> Um, you know the 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 you remember like little league the big chocolate bars you sell oh, yeah. for a dollar for yeah. your for your uh, for your Green Hornets uh, you know Suburban mm-hmm. Park Maryland Dodgers yeah I've seen a dog get into some of those the that's a problem super soaker uh, they leave plenty of evidence behind yeah they do it's uh, just a it's not a trail of breadcrumbs it's just a it's just a chocolate river through the I bet, house but yeah I was just gonna say they don't stay in a spot do they no no they certainly don't what um what I'm just trying to think though of all the things. What's worse than the idea of sharks on cocaine? <laughs> like, just in terms of, like, you got to be kidding me. This is a sign that the apocalypse is nigh. It's, yeah. a, it's right well, around I the I don't corner. know. I've heard, I've read, I've seen in movies that it's an appetite suppressant, cocaine. Mm-hmm. Maybe this works in our favor. I mean, let's think it out. They're all stoned on go. cocaine. There you They're go. They're not hungry. There you they go. They want to party. Yeah. Uh, you know, they want to disco all night. Florida, home of the Everglades, you could spike up all the pythons, that invasive species. What if, I wonder if snakes would act weird uh, with cocaine. We, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but now there's actually video, speaking of pythons. I believe it is in, is it in Indonesia? Oh, yeah. A woman uh, was uh, caught up in the, uh, by a python in the, in the woods. She was walking from her village. A mother of four. We heard this story a couple weeks ago. We were like, oh my God, the report is that the, her husband found her in the belly of a python. Uh, and video of them extricating her was put online. It's a real story, and it's, yeah. and somebody said, "Oh, you're oh, are you cutting your wife out of that snake? Let me get my iPhone out and shoot it so the world can watch." It's oh, it's incredible. I haven't watched it. I just it, saw that it's it, there. It's pretty gruesome, and it's all pixelated. The story I'm like that I was looking at, and so I thought, well, it's safe to watch. It's mm-hmm. pixelated. How bad can it be? Uh, but the video was not pixelated, and Oof. it's a woman in the belly of a python, and they just yeah, they try to cut her out. It it, it doesn't look good. I have several songs. I don't know if they that, swear in this or not. Uh oh, someone can train. Oh, it's a foreign language. Oh, okay. Did you hear that? Someone just went. Ugh. I hear that again. Yeah, 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 that's that's about right. That's the guy down there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's her. Yeah, her little foot just flopped out. Okay. Okay. Well, mom's not coming home. No, I guess not. Um. So, uh, I there are certain like little hooks of songs that just constantly are in my head, waiting to be applied for any reason at any time. Which I wish I didn't have that. Um. And one of those is you know the song, uh, uh the Midnight Oil song, Beds Are Burning. The yeah. intro goes. Oh, bow, oh I just bow, was listening bow. to that last night. That's yeah. so weird. You know that top of the song. Gang, gang, gang. Mm-hmm. I, in my head, what I'm hearing for the last 10 minutes is cocaine sharks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they, they, they have their own theme song. <laughs> Give it back to the cocaine sharks. That sounds like a like an old, um, you know, like one of the like the TV funhouse videos on SNL, like the cocaine sharks, <laughs> yeah. like an animated series Robert about Smigel. wild ass cocaine sharks like <laughs> hanging out. Hey man, you got anything? Now you holding? No, I'm not holding, man. What was that? It's human, you don't want that. Look at that seal. Hold on. Wow. You know, they uh, driving around. Telling you the next movie hit. will be out before Labor Day. There's a good chance of that. Um, uh, this is uh, this is a story that is drug free but completely insane from Nebraska. A kid in the town of. 
Bennett. 17-year-old boy is in a whole lot of trouble. He's a big fan of trains. He's a train enthusiast. I don't mean model trains. I mean real trains. And uh, he happened to be at the scene of a derailment recently, and he filmed it. with. He, had a, he happened to be there as a BNSF train came off the rails. Now, two locomotives and five fully loaded rail cars came off. They remained upright, but they collided with an empty rail car. Yeah. They, you know, there was like a switch that was wrong and they jumped the tracks. And he just happened to be there and filming. And he happened Hopper to be there doing. filming. 17-year-old boy. Go figure. Well, as it turns out, he's now been arrested. Apparently, not only did he report the derailment and film the derailment, he caused the derailment. Oh, hey, you little psycho. Oops. Uh, yeah, he set up a tripod. It wasn't his iPhone. He had a camera on a tripod. He set it up <laughs> ahead of time to be sure to get it because there's surveillance footage like CCTV showed him before, long before the train got there. He was on the scene Staging. setting up the shot. Oh, Billy. Yeah. And apparently he, the <laughs> investigator <laughs> said the cause was undetermined, but the boy, when asked, said, well, obviously a switch must have been flipped the wrong way. Oh, I was like, well. uh, Really? You're stupid. Obviously. How'd you know that? Yeah, dumb. Um, all the things you can get. At, when I was 17, the biggest trouble I'd ever gotten into, let me think. Well, it was not derailing freight trains. <laughs> Holy crap, uh, man. That was that old urban myth, though. I think it was an urban myth. Um, it was in South Dakota, and then I heard it happened in Minnesota, too. And I went, wait a minute, so that never happened. You know how they put the coin on the train track, sure. and it smashes it, and you have yeah. a... A weird looking uh, flattened sm- coin, flattened coin mm-hmm. that someone had lined up a whole bunch of quarters, like 50 quarters on the train track and derailed the train and then it burned the town down or something. Oh, like sure. That. Yeah, yeah, there's a song about it. I, I think Split Lake Brayfield did I a song first, about it. I first heard that story uh, in, in Wyandotte, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit where yeah. my grandparents lived. I was probably five the first time we were putting coins on the track and someone said, don't put too many. <laughs> you can derail that train. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's been going around forever. Uh, this this kid knew that was, uh, uh, you know, just a bunch of bunk. You got to throw a switch. Oof. A little punk. And then he sits around and... So you said he has an interest in trains. Not like a hobby so much as yeah. sort of a psychopath. Sort of like, uh, you know, uh, what do they call them? Pyrotechnics? Or not pyrotechnics, pyromaniacs. Pyromaniacs. Mm-hmm. He told in, he told investigators, well, he's a train enthusiast, and I just happened to be there. And then he said, no, I wasn't in the area before. I was just driving by, and I got out and saw it, and I, I definitely did not tamper with the switch. But he did tell the <laughs> investigator exactly where the switch was, and he knew how it did operate. Uh, surveillance video did discover his car his 1996 Buick Park Avenue setting up right outside I mean it's just like dude yeah come on you got to walk in through fields of wheat and and under you got to be yeah nice weird Woody Allen reference from my brain from uh, love and death wheat wheat fields of wheat you got to come in underground undercover in camo and set the tripod up you don't pull up your car get out set up a camera on a tripod and it just so happens three minutes later a train derails now he knows when I was a kid, no urban rural legend at all. A train did derail in my hometown in Kentucky, and it it was uh, at a part of the tracks. And I mean, and the cars all came off and were like sideways. You know, it was like serious. Yeah, big tipper. And it was days and days, if not a full week, of before it was all clear. But it it happened at a place where the train tracks there was a, a, a major intersection of two serious roads in town that people travel on and it cut off two of the roads of the if you just think of a cross like the 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 one going north it's at the top and then to the left two of the four roads were blocked by train cars for a full week the yeah. entire town's traffic was rerouted <laughs> my morning bus ride to school went from 20 minutes to an hour oh, yeah. because of one train derailment it was incredible how much that impacted everything yeah no kidding and, of course, we were right there on the scene climbing on the derailed train cars every day. Oh, that'd be fun. Because it was the 70s, and, and there was what no could have possibly gone wrong? No, your parents <laughs> probably went to a Polaroid yeah. of you up there on top of the, you know, fresh wreck. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 
92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Good morning for the July the 24th. On August 9th, the Stray Cats are playing the Ledge Amphitheater. The Stray Cats are a kick-ass live band. And we've got a couple tickets, and we would love to give them away. We're going to play a game right now. Callers 9 and 2 on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. Callers 9 and 2 will lock you in. You'll be able to play a game of our choosing to try to win these tickets. So get on the horn. Get in there. In the meantime, we just we, we were asking earlier in the show, what's the ultimate 80s song? Therefore, no Led Zeppelin uh, can be applied because right. they didn't release any... To, the, Coda came out oh, in the 80s, <laughs> but... All recorded in the 70s. Yeah. The song we just heard, Fool in the Rain, uh, from their final album, Into the Outdoor, released in 1979. The final tour of the United States for Led Zeppelin was in 1977. That's the last time Led Zeppelin toured in America. Yep. They had a few reporters that they allowed around the band on that final tour. Led Zeppelin famously frosty with the music press. Yeah. Well, you know, they didn't get a lot of love. A lot of they there was there were rules. If you applied for a press pass to be around Led Zeppelin in 1977, they had they had a list. They said there's five rules that you have to agree to. Number one, never talk to anyone in the band unless they talk to you first. One okay. <laughs> A, do not ever make any sort of eye contact with John Bonham. This is for your safety. <laughs> If your if your drummer is a threat to those closest to him on tour, yeah. maybe maybe he doesn't need to be on tour. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm just I mean, saying, they, keep him out of the uh, press room. Ooh. Probably, maybe he doesn't don't, need to be interviewed. Don't make eye contact with John Bonham, or as they <laughs> called him then, Coco. It sounds like something you'd say for a silverback gorilla, not John right, Bonham. Right. Number three, do not talk to Peter Grant, the band's manager, or tour manager Richard Cole for any reason. Yeah, well, I, I, would, I love that. Like, just no. Why would you want to? It wasn't like Peter Grant was approachable. I, well, exactly. I mean, uh, number three, keep your cassette player turned off at all times unless conducting an interview. Number four, never ask questions about anything other than the music. You know, I think I'm just going to go interview Nitty Gritty Dirt Band instead. So, by the way, talking about music, as they say, it's like it's like riding a bicycle about fish. It's like, what, whatever. Like, talk about me. The music speaks for itself. Yeah, right. Uh, finally, and this is great. Number five, it says, most importantly, understand this. The band will read what is written about them. The band does not like the press, nor do they trust them. Have a good interview. <laughs> yeah, no, go get them, kid. That's just hilarious to me. Uh, uh, as far as I know, the what straight cats. Hunter S. Thompson would have interviewed them, how that would have gone. That would have been pretty great. Yeah, you know, he would have made eye contact. Do you remember in the early 90s? With a 44 sitting on the table. Oh, my God, this is the weirdest thing. In 92 or 93, ABC ran an interview, uh, like a 30 or 60 minute show. It was Hunter Thompson and Keith Richards. And yeah. it was on network TV. <laughs> the two of them sitting at Woody Creek at Hunter's place out there in Colorado, um, just talking and ham just wasted. Of course Weird. they were wasted. And, it was, and this is not the 70s. This was on in the early 90s because I remember <laughs> watching it. Yeah. And no bigger Hunter Thompson fan on earth than me at the time. No bigger Stones fan. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> just, just two old wasted dudes. What was the set like? What, what, what I, was, I think it was, they were just sitting in chairs. Well, like Dan Rather or something? Yeah, it was yeah. just like, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> ah, I'll say it was. I've owned some horses. I've never been on one. <laughs> I mean, it's just the craziness. I, I, I gotta, I gotta look that one up. That was the weirdest thing ever. I, I swear. And I almost want to say, there's no way it was live. But uh, it was. No. I'm looking it up right no. now. 1993. Yeah, it was just on right. TV. It was strange. And of course, you look at it, and in 1993, I was like, "Man, Keith look old, looks old." And then you look at it now, and you're like, "Ah, oh, he looks amazing compared to what he's doing now." Uh, the Stray Cats are still up and rocking, and they are at the Ledge Amphitheater on August 9th. Do we have a couple callers ready to roll? We do. They're ready to play. Well, then we have a game we're going to play, and I can't wait to hear what it is, Tony. That's a little, little unconventional. The KQ Morning Show presents Puma Panther Pussy. <laughs> What? <laughs> yes, with Stray Cats tickets on the line, we're we're feeling kind of feline is what it is. What we're going to do is give you the info, then you select either Puma, Panther, or Pussy, and mm. guess the most right, and you win, win, win. Okay. If uh, 
I recall correctly, this game was big on the playgrounds and locker rooms across the land. I mean, Puma, a, Panther, or Pussy? Okay. Yes. Gosh, I that's, don't know. I've right. always, yeah, I've always wanted my choice. To clarify, it's not Puma; it's Puma, right? Puma. 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 Puma, Panther or Pussy. All right, who's caller number one? Please say it's Patty. <laughs> it is. <laughs> James from North Branch is going to play. James, good morning. James, you're with us. Hello. Hey, James, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, great. Are you ready to play for some Stray Cats tickets? I sure am. All right, it's Puma, Panther, or Pussy. Good luck, sir. I can't believe I'm saying that with a straight face. Right. I know. You tell us which is which. Your first one, a wild variant of the leopard and jaguar with black pigment found mostly in Africa, Asia, and South American tropical forests. I would say leopard. Uh, that's that not choice? one of the choices. It's, it's either a puma, a panther, or a pussy. Uh, puma. Mm. I am sorry, the black pigment kind of gave it away, but it, it is a panther. Panther number one. Oh, sure, sure. Panther. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I get it now. That's five more to go. That's absolutely fine. It's okay. Just get Little... back on that uh, horse. <laughs> Stretch out. Number two, James. Solitary carnivore that likes to hunt at dawn and dusk. Goes by many names, including cougar or mountain lion. Puma, panther, or pussy? I don't know. What'd you say, James? Wolverine. Wolverine, maybe. I, James, uh, you yeah. mm. you got a you got a one in three shot here. It's a puma, a panther, or a pussy. What'd you call me? But you uh, said you said Wolverine. Puma, so. puma, yeah, definitely. A puma. All right, yeah. there, back on track. Back on track. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine is a carnivore, though. So yeah, that's true. Not completely wrong. All right, you're one for two, James. Remember, <laughs> puma, panther, or pussy. That's it. That a big swing. Okay. okay. All right, James, number three. Born a sickly child, the second son of Don Vito Corleone, Fredo betrayed his brother Michael and paid the ultimate price. Fredo Corleone. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Puma? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Puma? That would have been my guess. Is he a... No. Uh, gosh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh. Would, uh, Fredo would be a... Uh, I, I a guess pussy. we'd call him a pussy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, All right. God. That's bad. All right. Yeah. That's... Sorry. I'm confused, too. <laughs> James, number four, created by Stan Lee. This superhero's superhuman attributes primarily derive... From a native plant from the nation of Wakanda. Puma, panther, or pussy? Uh, let's go with uh, panther. There Animal. you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Nicely done. <laughs> he gives himself to the. I know. It feels uh, good, doesn't it? <laughs> that was tough. Hit it. <laughs> two for four. <laughs> All right, two more, my friend. Five, the colorful suede choice of former New York Knicks star guard Walt Clyde Frazier and the namesake for his feet. Uh, pussy? I don't know. Mm. No, I am sorry. It was a puma. Puma. The, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Who wore Pumas, the famous, the uh, the Clydes. They were suede. All right, let's I had finish, some orange ones. Let's finish strong here. Orange Pumas, that's pretty great. I did. They, my friends called them my party shoes. Whew. Number six, fictional character, Chief Inspector Clouseau, played by Peter Sellers in the movie series and a Saturday morning cartoon character from the 1970s. That would be a panther. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah, that's that's a boy. A, All right. That's a pink pussy on that one. Strong finish. Pink Bam. Panther, All right, though. James. Okay, you, you almost said it. You did say it. You're batting 500, <laughs> with, with James. Conviction. Three for six. Oh, I said I would have said that <laughs> if I were playing the game. Yeah. All right, James. Good job, brother. You got half of them right. We're going to put you on hold for a minute. It's time to go to contestant number two. Who have we got? All right. Step up. John from Plymouth. John, good morning. John-o! No. Hello? Hi. John, are you with us? <laughs> I'm with you. All right. Are you ready to play Puma, Panther, or Pussy? <laughs> All right. Do it. Well, that, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, that sounds like you are. I like the chuckle. 
All right, John, number one, former Viking Adam Thielen now wears the blue, black, and silver. That was also adorned by Cam Newton, Bryce Young, and Julius Peppers. Uh, Puma. Yikes, that would be Panther. Carolina the Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Oh, is that an NFL team? They are, Used to be. Apparently, oh. yeah. Yeah, they're, they're in the JV now. <laughs> All right, John, let's get this one. All right, John, number two, Biff. Biff, a dim-witted bully from the Back to the Future film trilogy, almost messes up Marty's future until feeble George McFly finds the guts to sock Biff in the kisser, knocking him out cold. Biff is a... Pussy. Yeah. Yeah, That boy. Yes, Biff is. John almost had an indignant Mm -hmm. tone when he Mm -hmm. answered that question. Yes, he did. (laughs) All right, John, number three, standing two to three feet at the shoulder, a predator that can leap 20 feet straight up and attacks by leaping onto the back of its prey. I'm going to go with Puma. Good call. Yeah. Yes, sir. There you go, John. His cats are coming into focus mm-hmm. now. Number four, rhymes with the starlet's name who played a sword-wielding mama assassin in Tarantino's Kill Bill. That's going to be Puma Hulk. It is. Wow. Puma Thurman. Mm-hmm. Cougar now. <laughs> John, uh, number five, the six-fingered Count Rugen in The Princess Bride when finally confronted by Enigo Montoya, Spanish fencing master. The Count, played by Christopher Guest, freezes, turns around, and scampers away. Count Rugen is a... Thank you, the pussy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> sure he was. One more for you. Main character of the comic strip and movie, lazy, overweight, cynical, self-absorbed, and Orange Garfield is a... He's a pussy. Nicely done. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I like the hesitation. I'm liking it. Fantastic. Nice, John, nice. that, my friend, uh, if my math is correct, you just went five for six. Wow. John, coming in strong. James, we appreciate the effort, my man. Thanks for listening. Sorry it didn't go your way today. But, John, you, sir, have tickets to see the Stray Cats. If you want to call them the Stray Pumas or the Stray Panthers, go for it. I would stay away from Stray Pussies. They're tattooed muscle muscle guys. They might smack you. Uh, The Stray Cats, August 9th at the Ledge Amphitheater. Thank you for calling in and playing. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, guys. You got it. All right. How inventive and clever. I like that. Why? Well, think the tomorrow is <laughs> going to be Puma Panther or Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Who would win in a fight? How about you know what? No, how about this? How about you know what a bull weevil is? Do yes, weevil, weevil, weasel, or Wolverine? That would be a good. One. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverines on cocaine. Well, man, that, that, please let's keep the drugs away from the Wolverines. Mm. They're, they get they're they're mad enough as it is. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, it's it's kind of funny. Every now and again, you find yourself traveling and you get an idea, like you might want to do something. Like, you know, I I, w- I wouldn't do this at home, but what the hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? You oh, remember, yeah. remember in the remember there was the old uh, in the movie Airplane mm-hmm. they they did the spoof on the old coffee commercial where the guy gets another cup of coffee and his wife goes John never has two cups of coffee <laughs> right. at home. Yeah. But you know we all do that. You get on the re- like I drink coffee. I drink black coffee. But sometimes when I'm elsewhere, when I'm in a new setting, I don't know why I do this. My wife pointed out. She goes, you know. You you put cream and sugar in coffee like when you're somewhere new. I go what? Yeah. And, she, and I know. I go, oh, I do. That's like a weird thing. Like yeah. it's almost like, hey, I'm on vacation. I'll live a little. I, I don't know. I don't know. You I, are I, a madman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, spur the moment choices you make. Because hey, what the hell? When am I going to be back here? Might as well live and learn a little bit. Um, one of the things I would recommend to anybody listening is um, if you're somewhere in a if you're in a foreign land where you've never been before and you have a spur of the moment decision that involves the word surgery, <laughs> may, maybe maybe don't. <laughs> Trust me. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Wednesday, July the 24th, uh, the first of the two most important days of my life. This is Connell Gorman's 24th birthday. Oh, oh how about happy that? birthday. On this day in the year 2000, the young lad showed up late afternoon after 30-something oh, hours of 
brutal labor that oh, I no. was it that much? stood by sympathetically getting in the way and mm-hmm. doing my best. Oh, you um, my, I'm sorry. That must have been hard on you. Well, really hard on me. <laughs> Poor you. Uh, I mean, you, you guys around. have no idea how tired I was when oh, it was all said and done. You had to accumulate back, ice back. chips. Oh, you don't yeah. get a proper meal either. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. I mean, one minute I'm having a perfectly fine, relaxed Sunday afternoon. The next minute I'm racing to the hospital and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then it's the next night. And then I'm like, oh, finally. Why can't they put a more comfortable chair in there? What about, let's think about dad. How's dad's comfort? <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, it was, it was brutal. I, honestly, it was rough. Um, uh, but I will say, uh, um, it, it's. A, I remember probably every minute of it, it feels like, you know, from, from the moment of, um, I think my water just broke. And then literally like, you know, like a day and a half later, having a baby and mm-hmm. knowing everybody was okay and going to be okay. Just that feeling of uh, the first time you're looking at a human going, oh, wait, God. that's mine. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, for me, I was uh, just yeah. shy of my 35th birthday. And I remember thinking, oh, I, I can just stop caring about all this nonsense mm-hmm. right now. It was really, it yeah. was really amazing moment. Yes. Um, so uh, happy birthday, young lad, who's still, I'm sure, sound asleep down in, uh, he's in Tennessee today. And, uh, you know, but anyway, it was a great day. And uh, and every time I say July 24th, I go, huh. Oh. So I just thought I'd let you know why I'm going, huh, oh, inside every time. Baby boy. Um, traveling. We've all done it. We all find ourselves sometimes in a place we've never been. And there's impulse shopping. There's impulse mm. meals. I Huckers. know when I'm, could could be hookers. I, uh, I'm i a big fan. Of, I love street food and new places. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. it's, just, it's just fascinating. And there's always a voice in the back of my head. Sometimes it'll be like, I hope this is going to be good. I hope it's not spoiled. I hope they clean the food cart. But I've never really had a real problem. One time, well, twice. I've had food poisoning twice uh, internationally. Yeah. Uh, but that's a whole lot of times I could have, and it's only been twice. Um, uh, but, you know, these things happen. You're somewhere new. You're excited. You're with friends. You have a couple drinks, and then suddenly you make a decision. You make up the next day, and maybe sometimes you think, probably should have rethought mm. that one. Probably this, got a disease. Yeah. This story's on a whole nother level. Uh, a young woman from the United Kingdom, 19 years old, with friends in Turkey, she had an impulse decision, as she later described it. Tattoo. Breast job. <laughs> Breast well, there was a she special. She decided to go for implants and a lift. Oh, honey. Spur just, of the moment. Well, it said with, today only. Yeah. She, Buy one, get one free. She saw that a friend had been somewhere at a clinic and thought, oh my gosh, she looks great. I'll do the same thing. How old was she? She didn't book a flight to do it. She was already there okay. and on the spot thought, I've got 4,000 quid. That's about $5,000. I got $5,000 to make sure that my breasts look better for my upcoming wedding. Oh, damn Um, weddings. Yeah, the reason that we know this story happened is because it didn't turn out so well. (laughs) Uh, She got the bandages off after she went home, and she said uh, she knew she was in trouble when she said, when her first impression, looking in the mirror, was, it looks like I was bitten by a shark. Uh, <laughs> on cocaine. Yeah, that's uh, not. No, that's uh, mangled is the word that comes to mind. Yeah, mangled. She uh, oh. she had a real, real difficult uh, reaction here. Apparently, it looks like she's uh, all but lost one of her nipples. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, fell yeah, out. Yeah. Just, no, uh, she uh, said that she overheard a doctor after surgery say, I made a mistake, but don't worry, I corrected it before you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Number one thing on the board yeah. what, that you don't want to hear from your doctor during surgery. Ding, ding, ding. Here she, here's the young lass. My body just rejected the new nipple that I was given. Um, so it got infected. And now because it's infected, it's fallen off. The nipple's falling off. Oh, okay. Hold on there. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of experience on the front end of breast surgery a bit after, but you get new nipples? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, okay, do you mind? I, because it sounds like she, my new nipple. My body just rejected yeah. the new nipple that I was given. Um, 
so it got infected and now because it's infected it's falling off yeah well, sometimes they throw it in i guess she, <laughs> I, you just get a oh, it's like a, is it made of flesh is it to someone else's nipple is there a nip do you donate nipples when you die she uh she went public with the story because she said she just wants to make sure other people don't make the same mistake <laughs> let, let me just go out on a limb here um I, I don't think a whole lot of people are making spur of the moment uh, breast implant and lift decisions yeah. in foreign countries. Yeah. I, they might, but they might look into it ahead of time, and they might fly. I mean, we've heard yeah. stories. People go south of the border to Mexico to get. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, there's these, but 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 you only hear about these stories because so many of them go awry. Right, exactly. It's go with the tramp stamp, get the bad tattoo that you're going to regret for the rest of your life. Although they do tattoo removal, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and first of all, uh, looking at the story, she's 19. You don't need the boob job at 19. No, you don't need no. the boob job. But that's no. a good way to piss it, off yeah. a lot of women listening that are well past 19. She wanted them, she said, to be perkier if you than think they you're are saying, at 19. Just wait. Oh. Wait till they fall under your armpit. <laughs> oh. Like, you don't need the boob job at 19. I, wait till they fall under your husband's armpit. <laughs> Uh, what? Uh, so she's going to need another boob job. Oh, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> you know how you can get that nipple back on? Maybe that's why they make these things. Nipple clamps. Just oh. clamp it back on. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh, they're telling her, her doctors in England are saying, you got about six months. They're going to do another procedure. They, she's looking at six months of healing time. She does have a wedding planned for later in the year. Damn. And uh, she said her wedding dress is off the shoulder, so I'm hoping it'll heal beforehand. <laughs> okay, you, clearly your priorities are all just lining up perfectly. No, but she's only nipping out on one side. Man. Um, this is kind of like, I mean, a little different, but it just brings to mind the hawk to a girl. Um, you're just out there for reasons. You probably sure. didn't plan to be famous, but you are now, and it's uh, maybe not for the reason you would have hoped. In the, and, and speaking of the hawk to a girl, she's got a set of trading cards now. No. You can oh, buy what? Leaf Trading Cards has an exclusive series of cardboard collectibles. It'll set you back 100 bucks. Each one includes an autographed card with a unique inscription below a snapshot of her rocking a cowboy hat. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you gotta give him that hook to and spit on that thing. There you go. Man. Um, Ooh, so come f- with gum? I, I, for... <laughs> <laughs> for a hundred bucks, you can get her trading card set uh, with a personal inscription. All I right. Mean, well, you, you know, guys are gonna have to split it because I'm not buying two separate ones as a gift. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, the, the the at this point, I'm I look at her and I think to myself, she makes. Uh, Sebastian Bach looked like Walter Cronkite. You know, it's like, what, yeah. you're paying 100 bucks for a picture of this person yeah, that we know nothing out. about her. It'll sell out. It There's will sell out. selling jars of farts online. Yeah. So uh, this is going to sell out. Uh, yeah, cash in, honey, because the 15 minutes is ticking. Um, that that's very true. Um, uh, but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, like I said, people get famous, uh, maybe not for the reason they want to be, but I guess, I guess if that door opens and you are thrust into that room, make the most hay while you can, the yeah. sun will set soon. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of people who are unintentionally famous for weird things, another, this is a 26 year old woman in Florida. She was arrested over the weekend on Sunday. Uh, well, her name's Molly Hogan. So I'm just going to go, as an Irishman, I can say, she's probably just drunk and Irish. <laughs> Molly Hogan um, it was arrested for assault. She attacked her fiancé uh, to the point where they had to call police, and she was arrested. Apparently, she beat the snot out of this guy. What was the fight over? Uh, it was a heated argument about the prenup. The prenup. <laughs> her her, her fiancé. Um, they were very... Contentious. There, there's obviously a very different idea of what the prenup should cover or if it should even be in place. The groom to be told the police, Molly grabbed me around the head, struck yeah. me on the chest, torso, back, and legs, causing multiple physical injuries. The groom's brother was there. Molly bit him on the arms as he tried to break the fight up. <laughs> the so... wedding was scheduled for this Saturday, I July 27th. The, I would put that in the prenup. No beating the, me up. The wedding registry is still online, so we don't know <laughs> if they're going to go through with it. There is a problem. There is a wedding still scheduled, and now an active restraining order is in play. <laughs> so well, maybe they get married via Zoom. A Zoom, yeah. You can be on one side of the church. You're going to have to be 100 feet on the... Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, prenups. I mean, those are only for rich people. I thought, but I tell uh, you what, if you're if you're 
planning to get married to somebody, it's one thing if she kicks your ass. That's yeah. a sign. If she kicks your brother's ass too, yeah, I'm gonna go with move on. A <laughs> panther, puma, or I'm gonna go with pussy on this one. <laughs> yeah, a couple yeah, of the, pussies. Yeah. Man, so you guys seem like you had it all going in your way. What happened? Well, it was really weird. She, um, she, uh, well, she beat up me and my brother. <laughs> I mean, how do you tell that story for the rest of your life? Yeah, it's no. It's incredible. I prayed up. I I mean, and I'm, I'm sure that, uh, I'm just thinking if that were me, the, the, the first responsible, uh, the first appropriate question is, well, hang on, which brother? Yeah. You know, it's like, right? Right. I mean, you just try to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I mean, can you, of all the reasons that you break, I mean, and I, I, I have friends who, have been engaged like as soon as they put the ring on then they, they broke up you know it was yeah. kind of like uh, it's we like, did the it's, three minute marriage yesterday oh, that's the right story. there was a three minute marriage yeah. um, but it's like a do or die thing it's like I'm going to commit and then as soon as you commit you realize oh god no this isn't what I want at all that's not that uncommon but it's usually more just you, you your central nervous system tells you hey dude this isn't what you want right. or hey sister get a new plan this is a new one for me we <laughs> fought over the prenup to the point <laughs> where I went to jail because I kicked my fiance's ass <laughs> oh and his brother too yeah <sighs> Throw that in. It does not say she's an MMA fighter. It doesn't say she's skilled in any sort of martial arts. Her, her name's Molly Hogan, and she's 26, and she's from Florida. I'm just assuming she'd had just the perfect amount of uh, Mai Tais to put her in the state of mind to do this. <laughs> I mean, but how do you move forward from something like that? I mean, things are going to be delicate in the house. You have to bring things up in the marriage from time to time. And uh, when she when's Molly going to go off? Yeah, I don't know. I mean that that's that's a that's a pretty good point. I mean that you wake up after your uh, wedding night, your first day on the honeymoon, and yeah. you're like terrified to ask her what she wants for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you do you want do you want a room, um, room sir? Do you want to just go down to the cafe or do you want room service? I'm sorry, <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah. Did I say I wanted room service? <laughs> you get me oatmeal from McDonald's. Yeah. It's just brutal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe this isn't the one. <laughs> Uh, I I can't imagine um, that again. I'm just going back to the guy, just the brother-in-law. It's one thing, okay. We, you know, yeah, okay. You're the you're the fiance. Yeah. You're the dude. Uh, for lack of a better word, you're you're whipped. You're you're gonna you're not gonna fight back again. But I'm thinking about my. I have five brothers, all married to wonderful women. None of them could kick my ass. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't allow them to. I mean, yeah, I, and right? these are like my sister. I love them all. Yeah. But if any of them, if I walked in a room and one of them's kicking my brother's ass, I'm going to end it and I'm not going to get the, I'm not going to be yeah, on the downside of this. Yeah. What is with these two? I'm surprised they had the guts to bring up a prenup in the first place. How did they I, think that was going to go? Some, with something her? tells me the conversation was literally this: "Hey, I, so we're a week out. It's probably a good time to talk about a prenup." That was it. <laughs> That's all it was. It wasn't an hour into the conversation. I think she literally snapped on a dime, just like that. Boom. Well, she's feeling a little tension herself, a little stress. You know, yeah. it's probably been cutting some meals to get into the wedding dress That's as they it. do. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Maybe one of her nipples fell off. Steve, we, we might not have all the facts here. So many questions. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe he said, can we put in the prenup that you'll be like the Hawk Tua girl? <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it was. You just never know. Uh, we're all, we're, we're, we all suffer at the, with the winds of society and whatever's going viral. We're all uh, impacted and influenced at all times. We never really know. Uh, what is the ultimate 80s song? A question we asked earlier in the show. We'd still like you to weigh in on the KQ. QRS Facebook page or the KQ Talk and Text Line 651-989-ROCK. And speaking of the 80s, this Friday night, the Rock the Boat 80s cruise, sorry, it's sold out. Oh. If you haven't already got your tickets, then you have to tune in Monday and we'll tell you all about how great it was because it's <laughs> going to be great. Thank you guys for listening uh, and thanks for buying up all those tickets. Stillwater Riverboats, we're going out on Friday night. We're going to have a very good time. Yeah. And uh <laughs> Between, uh, yeah, see, that's exactly what it's going to be like. Uh, uh, so we're we're all looking very forward to that. And again, thanks for picking up those tickets. That's an awesome thing to know that we're going to be sold out and packed to the gills, rocking with the 80s. Uh, it is time to get you prepared for the rest of your day. The top five at nine. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show.
92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Wednesday, July the 24th. Good morning. That was Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, which uh, was the first pre-90s video to ever hit a billion views on YouTube, which is astounding. But then again... It's, you know, the, the, the movie, the Queen movie, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Uh, boy, nothing. I mean, I mean, a billion dollars at the box office worldwide or o- well over that, a couple billion dollars by now. Uh, the play, they continue to tour. I mean, Queen, as big as they were in real time, they're, they're bigger now than they ever were while Freddie was still alive. Yeah, Wayne's World brought it back. You know, it just keeps First time, find, yep. you know, finding these new lives. That song, by the way, uh, the band... The the three guys who played music on I mean Freddie's a musician, but I'm saying Brian May and the rhythm section, they the the part where the song kicks in and they're all raucous. I mean they they knock that thing out like in a day. The song took weeks and weeks to get together. Um, analog recording technology. There were 180 tracks recorded that were bounced down to make it all onto the tape into submixes with all of the vocals and all the various things Freddie heard in his head. He had several recording studios operating simultaneously around town with different people doing different things. And he didn't have it all. It wasn't like he had a, 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 a PowerPoint to explain what the right. song was going to be. He was basically telling everyone, just trust me, when I put it all together, it'll all make sense. I mean, hearing Bohemian Rhapsody in your head as a complete completed piece of music, Freddie was just a different dude, man. I don't think the, the average person could probably appreciate how much... Uh, artistry and craft went into putting something like that together. Now a kid could do it in his basement with yeah. a you know digital audio software. Uh, but back then there must have been miles of tape laying everywhere. I remember Edgar Winter uh, talking about putting together the song Frankenstein. They called it Frankenstein because they had so many pieces of tape they edited That's together it, yeah, right. that there was just tape laying yeah. all over the studio. It's like Frankenstein's monster. That's right. what the so song they, was. They just had to it was. piece Oops. it together. Can you imagine Bohemian Rhapsody? I remember someone asking George Martin, the Beatles producer, of course. They said, man, uh, you guys spent three mo- four months making Sgt. Pepper, which back then was an, an eternity to yeah. make an album. And he said, God, if you'd had Pro Tools and all the stuff we have now, you could have done it in a week. And George Martin said, if you had given the Beatles Pro Tools in 1967, <laughs> we'd still be making the record. That's a yeah. good point. He yeah. goes, no, you don't understand. The limitations were our friend. <laughs> they had so many ideas, that, we, but we just had to make the most of it, invent ways to record yeah. in real time. Sergeant Pepper on a four-track machine. Oh it's like, no, if you gave us all the modern stuff, they'd still be in there oh. trying to make decisions. Well, yeah. We've got 7,000 different sound effects for Maxwell, you know, Abbey Road. The, that, what's the, which hammer sound do we want? No, they just had a guy smack an anvil with a sure. hammer, and that was the sound. <laughs> sometimes sometimes technology is a crutch, and sometimes it's a tool. It's a burden, yeah. just depends. All right, it is 9 o'clock. Let's get to the top five at 9. Here are the five things you're going to need to power up your day. Yesterday in Yellowstone, there was a lot of powering up as... A, quote, localized hydrothermal explosion took place at the National Park's Biscuit Basin around 10 a.m. A bunch of tourists are, uh, Yellowstone, of course, famous for Old Faithful, the geyser. Yeah. I imagine there's a few of those throughout the park, wow. a few different yeah, areas. Them, yeah. uh, there's a place called the Black Diamond Pool. Uh, well, right nearby there at this place called Biscuit Basin, it exploded yesterday. Uh, there is video you can find very quickly. So you know what a geyser looks like? It just looks like a water. Water spout, very hot water yep. comes out of the earth. This one is like a very different, way bigger explosion than anybody was expecting. There's a boardwalk that takes you near this pool, and suddenly everybody's running for their lives <laughs> because it looks like there's about to be a volcanic explosion. It wasn't yeah. a volcano. It's again, it's like a geyser gone wild, what they call a hydrothermal explosion. I've never heard of a hydrothermal explosion. I I don't want to be anywhere near one. Anywhere near one. This doesn't do it a lot of justice. Track down the video, but here's what it sounded like. Run, 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 run. Yep. Oh, my God. Max, keep going, keep going. We are getting out of here. (laughs) <laughs> run, run, run. Yeah. Sky run, high. run, run, your key words Price there. of admission. Yeah, that's obviously boiling hot water. That's steam that's uh, that's firing out of there. But this one, and it just builds up, you know, much like the teapot when it goes up, you know, gets yeah. the whistle going. Uh, but apparently uh, an extra amount of pressure blew a bunch of dirt and rocks and everything else in the air. Uh, 
unbelievably, this time at Yellowstone, those boardwalks are packed. Mm-hmm. Nuts to butts, literally. Uh, the fact that someone wasn't hurt is a pretty cool deal. Um, there is a inactive super volcano in Yellowstone Park. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, and if it were to become active and explode, uh, just a thing I read yesterday said, well, the immediate impact would be 90 to 100,000 deaths and two-thirds of the continental U.S. would be covered in ash. Yep. That would. Uh, oh. I remember at one point I was living in the dark red zone. They're like, oh, you wouldn't even know it. It's just it would be like if somebody dropped a nuclear uh, device in your backyard. You just would be evaporated. Oh, my God. It would be so at like 2,000 degrees immediately where I was at. But uh, that that's what Yellowstone is. Yellowstone itself is the top of the volcano. All 22 million acres of Yellowstone is the top of the volcano. Okay. Yeah, it's the top of the freaking uh, Okay, volcano. well, that's terrifying. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Yellowstone, take it easy. Seriously, <laughs> chill out over there. Uh, number four on your top five at nine. Uh, in a recent poll asking Americans about their sleep habits, uh, it seems that millennials are the lucky ones. They get the most sleep among us. Ryder, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sorry, I missed that. I dozed off for a second. <laughs> Apparently, millennials get the most sleep. They say 85% millennials polled say they get at least six hours a night. Yeah, Gen Z is, hold my beer, watch this. Yeah, Gen Zers, um, they do. They sleep in the latest, but they don't get the most. Uh, Gen X, that's right, we get the least amount of sleep, five hours or fewer. You know, just keeping the wheels of commerce turning, you know. Keeping Someone's got to do the work. operating, that's right, you're welcome. Someone's got to bridge the gap from the boomers who took everything to the <laughs> millennials the- and Gen Zs who have no future, and that's us. <laughs> Says the morning broadcast. Right. That's exactly We'll be right. asleep in about an hour. <laughs> Uh, in an uh, Yes, I will be. I will be asleep in one hour. That's exactly right. Number three on your top five at nine, the Wienermobile, the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. I'm sure we've all at least seen a photo of it, the giant Oscar sure. Mayer hot dog mm-hmm. driving around like a car. Uh, bad day this week in Chicago. There are several of these Oscar Mayer Wienermobiles throughout America, and one of them was driving on an expressway in Chicago. He hit another car, lost control, Overcorrected and ended up flipping the Wiener Mobile <laughs> onto its side. <laughs> no injuries were reported, but the, you yeah. see a Wiener Mobile tipping over on the highway. <laughs> it's a miracle there were there weren't a million uh, looky loo collisions because of it. Yeah, I mean it's it seems top heavy, right? You yeah. can't make a, you know you, you, you can't do a, a quick turn on that, but. I mean, we've all probably had wiener accidents, uh, and by which I mean from the grill to the bun, a lot of things yeah. can go awry. It's the worst. Euphemisms left, right, right, and center here all day long on the KQ Morning Show. Uh, the Olympics kick off uh, the day after tomorrow in Paris. The Paris 2024 Summer Olympiad, the second to last torchbearer during the Olympic opening ceremonies will be none other than the United States of America's very own Snoop Dogg. Why not? I mean, Snoop Dogg is a, is a gift to the rest of the world from the United States of America. I, he really is. I mean, you got to hand it to this guy. At one point, it looked like uh, incarceration, probably, leading the gang life. But uh, Then he became friends with Martha Stewart and was all good. Right. This guy is a PR genius. And then, uh, so what? Uh, well, speaking of incarceration. Yeah, right. Well... <laughs> Um, Snoop Dogg, that they, we don't know who he will pass the torch off to. He will hand the torch to the person that then lights the cauldron. <laughs> yeah. But the second to last torch bearer, Snoop Dogg, that is wonderful. That's the called a puff pass, I think. Th- I believe that's what that is. <laughs> the opening ceremony will, of course, have music and dancing and all sorts of stuff. Celine Dion will also perform during the ceremony. She's going to sing one song, and apparently she's being paid two million dollars for that one song wow, just uh, um at this point two million dollars to celine dion it's a bag of peanuts um yeah they're footing the bill all two million dollars does not include travel and accommodation for she and her family for don't, her and her family they have any singers over there in france you would think so but you know she does she's she's I a thought, quebecois so that's right. kind of like half french i thought she was done anyway what is the uh the the Stiff man disease? Stiff, stiff person syndrome is what she's suffering from. Right. She was just a stiff chick from Montreal, and then it yeah. became official. Now it's stiff person syndrome. Oh, um, and, and that's not a... It's, I, 
wouldn't wish that kind of thing on anybody. But, no. But of all the people to then come out and say that, I always, I'm sorry, I had to laugh. Like, yeah, we we know you're a stiff, and then I, I find out, oh, it's an actual condition. Oops. Well, Snoop, do a, these things happen? Yeah. Why don't they let Snoop sing and she can light the torch? Um, she has, uh, of course, famously has covered ACDC's "You Shook Me All Night Long." <laughs> if she can work up a Snoop Dogg song that has half the vibe and energy of that yeah. performance, then we'll all be getting somewhere. Yeah. Speaking of vibe and performance, an entire performance went down Sunday in Faribault on 35. A gentleman driving from California to Minnesota, Donald Ray Sanderson. He is uh, already under investigation. He's the kind of guy that police are keeping tabs on. He's got some fel- uh, drug charges uh, in his past. Um, some authorities in California said, hey, they called over here to Minnesota and said, hey, this dude, he left California. Apparently, he's heading back to Minnesota. So they had uh, their eyes peeled for him, found him down there in uh, Olmstead County, pulled him over on the side of the road. Um, long story short, 44 pounds of meth in the car. <laughs> I, and you know, based on his behavior, I think he left with more than 44 pounds. I think he did. 44 pounds of meth. He he was pulled over. He got out of the car. A woman in the car with him ran away, ran right up to the police and said, hey, he's got a gun, by the way. He did have a gun. He got out of the car and Good he waved, her, waved it at officers. Yeah. He fired one round into the ground right near his own feet and then stood there on the side of the road. There was a standoff for several hours before they finally got this guy oh, into custody. He, again, had a gun in his hand and had fired a round. It's a miracle he's still uh, breathing at yeah, this point. He took a him. shot at a drone that was flying overhead. <laughs> he then tried to uh, shoot himself. He put the gun to his own chin and somehow misfired. He's he tweaking. He just he could, tweaking. Yeah, couldn't uh, hold the gun. I'm surprised someone in uh, one of the cars stuck there in traffic for hours didn't get out and just shoot him. Yeah, that, there. That's a good point. Um, he he eventually dropped the gun, turned, and ran into uh, the field next to the highway. How'd that well, work Well, they had a canine unit right there waiting for just such a moment. <laughs> they hope you run. They once, want you to yeah, run. Yeah, once you dropped that gun and started running, they were like, oh, <laughs> watch this German shepherd subdue this goose. So, uh, yeah, he's facing 135 years in the joint. Throw away the key. Which is, I guess, you know, he's on I-35. Maybe they just added a zero and said, no. okay, here's wrong. Not just a bad day. Not just a bad decision. Convicted of violent crime felony. He's got the long rap sheet. Uh, you know, I just don't think he gets it. Let's see how he does on the inside. Maybe yeah, that's, that's the place for him. That's a pretty rough one. So there's your top five at nine for Wednesday, July the 24th. Uh, earlier in the show, w- sort of had a question about ultimate 80s songs. We heard a few 80s songs today. What's the ultimate 80s song to you? First thing that comes to mind. I mean, that's a whole lot of music over the course of that decade. Um and, and as we said, well, you said Asia, Heat of the Moment. Which, it just, it yeah, always it just does because right uh, that's one of the first summers I just kind of remember being younger. I could drive now. I was yep. 16. I was on my own. I thought I was an adult. And that song ruled the summer of 1982. So that's just some early memories for me. But I'm not going to... You know, die on that hill. There's uh, Purple Rain came up. That's mm-hmm. a big, I mean, boom, go right there. Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA, Love It or Hate It. Uh, iconic song from uh, Smack Dab right there in the middle of yep. the 1980s. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine, I think, is what prompted this whole thing. Huge. Guns N' Roses had a hot minute there for, yeah. for quite a while that they're still enjoying. Uh, top songs, most iconic songs of the 80s, 651-989-ROCK uh, is the KQ Talk and Text Line. Or hit us up on the KQRS Facebook page. Let us know what comes to mind first to you. Billy Joel and Sting, both responsible for some huge songs in the 80s, will be sharing the stage for one night this November in Las Vegas. You can score a trip for two that includes round-trip airfare, two-night hotel stay, and tickets to the show at Allegiant Stadium. Right now, text the national keyword STING to 95819 to enter for a chance to win. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Wednesday, July the 24th. Uh, That was Def Leppard. Uh, Guitarist Phil Collin of the band Def Leppard uh, is branching out. He is a comic book collector and has been since he was a kid in London in the 1960s. Oh. And he is going to release a what is known as a graphic novel for sure. the first time. <laughs> it is entitled Hysteria. 
uh, the the title of Def Leppard's biggest album from 1987. Okay. Uh, the book is described as this: a horror story dealing with the dark side of rock stardom. Interesting. <laughs> well, I the, mean, the dark side of all your dreams coming true. Well, yeah, I mean, he's he's lived on the dark though. I mean, yeah. in the air tonight, the divorce uh, spawned uh, several jaded hits. Uh, wow, does he do the illustrations as well? I'm not sure about that, <laughs> uh, but I I do know this. Um, uh, the the when I said it, the the trouble you get into when all your dreams come true, I'm not being snarky. That's a weird thing for a young person to experience because you spend your entire life looking at well, if this happens, then I'll do this, and if this happens, then yeah. I'll do this. I, I mean, it's an oldest, it's the oldest story in the world when somebody gets too much too quickly, and you when your reality far eclipses what your dreams were, it mm-hmm. it's at best confusing. Yeah, and then it, and then if everyone you see is offering you here, do some of this, have one of these, drink this, uh, well, yeah. I so I mean, there is is actually a pretty dark side to getting all mm-hmm. those dreams to come true really fast. So yeah. many people to prey on you, too. Uh, very true. Very true. Uh, including yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of musicians. I mean, I've, I, I haven't experienced anything like being in Def Leppard. Like, my, I had a great run. My band was successful. But we weren't like, it wasn't like Nirvana or Guns N' Roses, where suddenly you just, you went from zero to 100 in a matter of months and then yeah. had to face it. You know, Def Leppard, they were they were huge on Pyromania, right? Yeah. But then Hysteria, that's then that's a whole nother level. Look, Def Leppard hasn't put out an album anybody cared about in 30-some years. They're playing a stadium here in a couple weeks. I mean, <laughs> that's how big Def Leppard Leopard continues to be. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a lot of confusion for for young people who are in no way, shape, or form prepared to deal with that reality. So I, I imagine that the book will be probably kind of fascinating. Well, it's wait. So it's about Death it's a Leopard? graphic novel. It's just about the dark side of stardom. Okay. Of rock and roll mm-hmm. stardom. Well, you said hysteria oh, cool. and you were tying in the Def Leppard. I yeah. thought maybe he really kind of got together with the Def Leppard guys and said, let me do a graphic no- novel about your climb and rise. Well, he does say it's a horror story dealing with the dark side of rock stardom. So I guess it's like the dark side of rock stardom uh, add in some axe murders, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious. Not curious yeah. enough to probably buy it, but I'll check it out online. A chainsaw you know, on there somewhere. Maybe, yeah. there, maybe there's a time travel thing and Phil Collin reveals himself to actually be Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Okay, so I just got it. You said Phil Collin, not Collins. Not Collins, Collin of And I'm, I'm talking about In the Air Tonight. I did. Yeah. I made the classic <laughs> mistake right. that a... uh, people make. Hey, Phil he's the Collin, guy who the shirtless change... guitarist for Def yes. Leppard. Phil I see. Collin, not Collins. Uh-huh. Phil Collin was the guy who should have changed his name when he got famous, but yeah, now he's well, been confusing people ever since. He took since. off his shirt. That's his trademark. Tomorrow on this show at this time, Chris Maddock will be with us, a very funny gentleman. It's always great to have comedians in the studio. Chris Maddock tomorrow yeah. at this very same time on this very same show in this very same studio. We have been discussing, speaking of Def Leppard, uh, most Impactful, would we say? Ultimate '80s songs. What is yeah. the ultimate '80s song uh, for? And there's there's no wrong answer, but of course some are just more right than others. Uh, the six five one nine eight nine Rock KQ Talk and Text Line has just blown up all over the place. Um, someone wrote uh, my song of the '80s. Uh, let's see. Yes, I love rock and roll. My song of the '80s, Donna. I, I'm not sure. Rock and roll. As we just a song. played. We just played Joan Jett. I love rock oh, and roll. I love, oh, oh, of course. Oh, you know, I, I, yeah. I literally thought the text was, "Hey, I love rock and roll." <laughs> I, thank well, you, Ryder. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. Was oh, sure. that Joan Jett? I thought Phil Collins did that. <laughs> that's right. Um, well, I mean, that's hard to actually argue with that one. That one was yeah. huge. That was. I yep. remember that was back in the day when we didn't have top forty radio pumping out there in uh, Eastern South Dakota, but we did have Casey Kasem's top forty. Yeah, and I thought for about two years. That was on every freaking Sunday morning. Well, and she had mm-hmm. the, the pink jacket with the shoulder pads and the teased hair and all that stuff, too. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, she, was, she was rocking the 80s big and bad. I got Casey Kasem on Sunday evenings, and I remember... Yeah, same. I remember hearing that it was uh, aired in other markets in the morning, and I felt so robbed and cheated. I was like, wait, what? It's like I didn't get Sports Illustrated till Saturday. And one day, one of my older brothers, once he goes, I get it every Thursday. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no fair. <laughs> Yes, man. Yeah. I got to wait till Saturday. My first job at a radio station uh, reading... Uh 
hog reports, basically. Mm -hmm. And then he said, uh, nobody wants this job, Brian. I also wonder if you wouldn't mind coming in on Sunday mornings and running, uh, what is that show again? Casey Kasem's Top 40. And I thought, this is it. I've made it. I thought I'd just been offered uh, the lead role in uh, the greatest movie, the new Star Wars movie being made or something. (laughs) Yeah, sure. I'm like, you want me to... To push play? uh, Yeah, several (laughs) times. You had to flip. That was the album days, brother. Oh, man. And don't think I didn't go in there uh, fairly drunk a couple of times on Sunday morning and waking up to... Wait, hold on. Casey Kasem came on vinyl? Not only, Steve, did it come on vinyl, but I uh, might have kept some of them for myself. Still have some. I had no idea. Yeah, originally Rick Rick D's Top 40, uh, Casey Kasem's Top 40 all came on vinyl back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So each uh, each, uh, record was an hour, so you had to flip it and play the commercials in your cart, you know, while you flip the album, queued up the next hour, so you got, uh, yeah, there you have it. On, on I, album, I, I, on vinyl, I still have. I, just, I still have like three or four of them, you know. Free at home stuff. Awesome. I never. Uh, it makes sense. I I guess I assumed it was like real to real tape or something. No. Nope. But yeah, that sure. Okay, fair enough. If you're not learning, mm-hmm. you're not living. I feel very much alive right now. Yeah. <laughs> on the KQ Talking text line, Jimmy T wrote, "Back in black." If I had a dollar for every time that was yeah. played at parties, yeah. I could retire. I yeah. Mean, I almost forget it's '80s because I associate it's, that with the '90s, the it's 2000s. Yeah, exactly. It is 1980. It, it, they hit the ground running, summer of 80 with that. Oh, my God. It was, yeah, there was, I, I'm pretty sure that's all I listened to uh, for a year or two. I I, think. It's it's the biggest selling rock album worldwide ever, Back in Black. Yeah, and wow. and I'm always blown away. And the older you get, the more it blows my mind. Bon Scott died in February of 1980. That's, that album was in stores in July that's, of 1980. Wow. Not only did they... Barry and Morn Bon Scott. They replaced him, recorded an album, and had it in stores in six months. Yeah. Oh. From February to July. It's mind-blowing Yeah, how fast that turnaround was. It does make you think, because a lot of those songs had to have already probably been written, some licks already put together. Yeah, It does make you wonder what it would have sounded like with Bon Scott. Uh, but you can easily find out. It's on YouTube. Someone, AI already recorded it. Oh, the, well, the AI version? Kind of no. wild to listen to Bon Scott's version mm-hmm. of Back in Black, because you're like, I think that's exactly how it would have sounded, which... Still would have sold another 100 million copies. Um, I, I have to go with Men at Work. Who can it be now? Or as my friend Marty used to think it was, Coke and a Frito. <laughs> <laughs> what? True story. Wow. Uh, like, I don't think that's what no. it is. It's my, cute, though. My, my favorite completely <laughs> missing, misheard song title. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a friend of my brother's, but I was there when he said it. They, they were in college. I was in high school. Olivia Newton-John had the song Physical. Mm-hmm. And this guy, his name was Mark Levis, goes, have you heard that song, Olivia Newton-John, Let's Get Biblical? Oh, and he was dead serious. And we looked open. at him like, let's get Biblical. Wow. Uh, Boys of Summer by Don Henley seem to be playing on my alarm clock radio on KQ every morning, waking me up, heading off to sophomore year of high school. Eric from Shoreview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boys of Summer is a big one. On yeah. the KQ talking text line, we got somebody waiting to share an idea with us. Who is this? Our Stu, buddy Stu is digging the 80s music. Stu, good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, gentlemen and writer. How you doing? We're great, brother. What have you got for us? Uh, Dr. G, I love... Thinking about the 80s, video killed the radio star. Sure. You have to remember MTV. It changed. Made radio with pictures, man. That's right. How about ROCK in the USA? Like Cougar. Yeah, the Cougar. Um, Or your sister's Neutron Dance. (laughs) Wow. All right, Kira. Yeah. Yeah, you're swerving off everybody else's cop. MTV was great. Got it. Let's overcorrect that Wienermobile. Let's get it back on track. (laughs) It's top lane. (laughs) Oh, I love the show, you guys. Have a great weekend. Appreciate you, Stu. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Love that he called you Dr. G. I love that he wished us a great weekend on a Wednesday. Man, no kidding. <laughs> he's, he's living right. Yeah, right. no kidding. I want to... Jeez, oh, Pete. Yeah, video killed the radio star. That's the first, of course, first. video that MTV played when uh-huh. they first signed on. The Buggles. Mm-hmm. The Buggles. Yes. If memory serves. That's memory serves you well. Um, the Buggles, and then I, I didn't get MTV till 83, until I went mm. to college, because my I had night tracks on TBS on Friday nights. Uh, they oh. were playing their videos on my cable system. Just I didn't have MTV till I went away to, to college. And so I would watch Friday night night tracks. Mm-hmm. And night tracks was actually amazing because they would play Human League. 
Don't you want you me, baby? And then immediately follow that up with in the neighborhood, Tom Waits and stuff like <laughs> what? that. Oh, yeah. funny. Whatever and they so have. I was getting a lot of very interesting music, yeah. you know, on the cable, on MTV, you know, light, as we called mm. it, you know, knowing there's this better thing out there called MTV. And when I first got to school, I, I had a buddy who had a campus off, off campus apartment and he had MTV. And I would, this is August, September 83. I would literally just go to Jeff's apartment and I would sit there for eight hours mm-hmm. and just watch MTV. Oh, it's the best. Just like, this is the coolest oh, thing yeah. I've ever seen. It was. Yeah. That was it. We didn't have cable out of the farm, but they had it. And Woolsey and the Bow family mm-hmm. and Woolsey there had the cable <laughs> and they had MTV and that's where that that was the place to be on Friday night. Yeah. You did not piss off Daryl Bow during the week so yeah. that you could be at his house on Friday <laughs> night right. in the basement, the, on the couch. The fascinating thing about MTV to me, and I never knew this in real time, I read all this years later, All the a lot of the British bands, the new wave bands, like bands that I love, like Squeeze and the English Beat, sure. mm-hmm. uh, the Style Council, whatever it was, they would come to the States after MTV debuted. Um, and those bands were, the, the younger bands were way ahead on the video. They were all making videos, you know, right away. Some of the older heritage acts, it took a while to get them to come around like, dude, you got to make videos, right? So these, but a lot of the British bands would come over and... And cable TV was not something you had in the biggest cities. It was in rural America everywhere. But like New York City didn't have cable. Like LA didn't have cable. These Blows my mind. Back then, Ooh, these yeah. bands would come over. They'd play a club in New York City and they'd play a 2,000 seat room in Fargo. Yeah. They're like, what? They, the, a lot of the, like Haircut 100 <laughs> would be in Missoula, Montana, playing to 4,000 oh, people. Crazy. They couldn't get arrested in downtown New, in, in, in Brooklyn or Manhattan. Wow. The Expandel you know, Ballet. Exactly. exactly. Those, the, a lot mm-hmm. of those bands, That's they, true. they found all their fans in, in much smaller markets because wow. those are the places that had cable. It was just harder to get something new into a bigger city that's already been there, like yeah. cable TV. You know? I guess it was that like, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but imagine being like, you know, you're you're a kid in a band and you're having some success and you come to America and you're like, no, we're not going to New York or Philadelphia or Boston, <laughs> any of those towns. But we've got, um, there's a cool, we've got a t- it says, let's see here, Vermilion, South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's a pretty hot market for you there. They're like, yeah. I'm sorry, what? Wow, man. <laughs> That's fascinating. That man. is. I mean, you can't mention the '80s without mentioning uh, Michael Jackson in there somewhere. Yeah. Billy Jean. I see uh, shows up a bunch in the KQRS post on Facebook. Al mentions him here, and Tony. And mm-hmm. well, we said the, the the three albums that immediately come to mind. Not that I was paying attention, or I, you know, I was. I wanted to be too cool to care. But Thriller, Purple Rain, and Born in the USA. Yeah, yeah that's '83, '84, and '85. Those are just the the big, or I guess. Huge. Four, uh, for the other two, just the overwhelming everything in their sight. Mm-hmm. Those are like the three Godzillas of the 80s yeah. off the top of my head. Madonna. But then Guns uh, N' Roses comes yeah. along. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, it doesn't get more 80s than that. And, and you think... You know, what was specific to the 80s? Well, it was in 87, Slippery When Wet came out. All of a sudden, that was the biggest thing oh, in the world. 86, 87, one yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, there are so many. Fu- uh, Rhythm of the Night, DeBarge. I mean, wow. That's Chris on the <laughs> Facebook page. Beastie yes. Boys. I mean, that was you. You got to fight for your right to party. Yeah. Oh, how about this from Christine? At some point, some survey ranked Come On Eileen as the biggest song of the entire decade. Yeah, right. I can't turn the station fast enough when it comes on. Yeah, that's true. But very famously, I mean, what was what did we all remember about the video for Come On Eileen? I mean, the, uh, the painter. The twirling girl, the side yeah. boob. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh, so before that was, was going to say the painting overalls. The overalls before that, that was up. a term we all used. There, yeah. He picks her up and swings her at the end, <laughs> and and again going back to me at my buddy Jeff's apartment. That song would come out. You're like, okay, hang on, wait. Well, let's not leave till this is over because you're waiting for the three fourths of a second of some of some Irish girl that you have no idea if she. What, that's but all. You're like, hey, that's all. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. Um, the other, the other, it's money for nothing. The other video at that yeah. time for me, my one of the, that that just. A nonstop was owner of a lonely heart. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah. And not only was it a interesting, quirky, weird song. Yeah. The fact that it was yes is yeah. what can that was the thing. Like, wait, 
Roundabout, yes. The sa- Wait, mm-hmm. Prog Rock 70s, yes. I, this yeah, is them? The roundabout, I, years later. I mean, I, yes, Owner of a Lonely Heart was my introduction to yes. And then it was only when I went back and found out, you know, mm-hmm. Roundabout and some of those other Carnival. Yeah. Or no, that was Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I'm getting mm-hmm. confused now. Roundabout, um, the, uh, but the, my, brother Tom was a big prog rock guy and he had all those 70s albums yeah, and yeah. I, I remember saying to him what, what do you think of that uh, 90125 that's not yes <laughs> <laughs> prog rock purist wasn't having it mm-hmm. um, also on the Facebook page so many of these you, you immediately go this is what's great about it because you, you no matter what age wherever you were there's no wrong answer I had the tiger from Robert on the oh, Facebook page huge yeah, I mean I mean oh, everybody yeah, wants yeah. to rule the world. Huge. Mm-hmm. It, it was. For fears. Yeah. Tremendous song. I still, I don't know that I've ever turned that off. I've never got tired of that song. It always works. No, it's so it's happy. Just, just fantastic. Well, I just man. remember not liking it at the time. Remember the trench coats? They came out with the long curly hair and the yeah. trench coats, and that was the trench coat phase when all Mullets the guys flying. were coming back. They'd go off to college, and then they'd come back to Woolsey, South yeah. Dakota, and they were wearing a wool trench coat. That was the thing to wear. And you're like, no. I, no. I liked Everybody Wants to Rule the World. I will say that I the first time I saw the video for the follow-up, Shout, I was like, no. Mm-hmm. no Let it all out, Stop man. this out. Mm-hmm. These are the things I can do without. Come on. <laughs> no. Don't don't tell me you're going to list off some things in a song. Shout, shout, let it all out. These are the things I can do without. I so, wrote so, that. It sounds like a song you learned in French. These are the days of the week. Lundi, <laughs> mardi, mercredi. No, stop. I don't need a lesson from you, Roland Orzabal or whatever his name was. Oh, the 80s, MTV. It was all so much better then. Mm-hmm. At least that's what they tell me. All right, let's look back. July 24th, 1983 at Yankee Stadium. One of the most dramatic and bizarre regular season moments in baseball history went down. The Kansas City Royals, top of the ninth, they're two outs and they are down four to three to the home team New York Yankees. George Brett, Hall of Famer, comes in and hits a two-run home run off of Goose Gossage. Gives his team the lead, celebrates in the dugout. Billy Martin, Yankees manager, at that particular moment, goes up to the ump and goes, I think there's a little too much pine tar on his bat. You got to measure that. And the way they measured it was from the handle of the bat, from the bottom, you could put pine tar on the bat for whatever reason people put pine tar on a bat. Grip. But you could, it couldn't be higher up the bat than the width of home plate. That was the measurement. <laughs> <laughs> and so very famously, the umpires, they clear off the plate, they lay the bat down in front of it, and there's like an inch more pine tar than the width of home plate. Yeah. And the umpire looks at the dugout and says, sorry, you're out. <laughs> Not only does he remove the home run, that means they the game's over, ball. third yeah. out. Brett out. Well, hey, yeah. he's, he's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And he's demon mad. He is out. <laughs> and having to be... Restrained. George Brett Brian runs Henry. out of the dugout, and he's trying. He's trying Charges. to run so fast, his oh. arms are swinging wildly. He looks. He is maniacal. Truly, yeah. looks like a baboon. Rage. Yeah, it's it's re- it's a total. You want Marlon Perkins to be narrating <laughs> that? You see, Foster, that as the baboon is feeling threatened in the dugout, he re- responds by charging the umpire, and 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 as it turns out, they, so they lose the game. It's over. George Brett is like carried off the field, right. still trying to murder every umpire within a five-county right. area. The fact that he stopped, by the way, I thought he was going through the umpire, yeah. but yet he did stop, and it was spit in the face, noses touched. Craziest thing about it, they yeah. file an official complaint and 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 protest after the game, and they say, "Hey, we we need a, an appeal here." Major League Baseball says, "You know what? Yeah, we don't think that should have happened. We'll let you replay the ninth inning." And a month later, they did, and the Royals actually, as it turned out. Out, scored a couple runs in the top of the ninth a month later and won the game. Such a bizarre thing. And again, not too many regular season moments that have no bearing on the postseason matter, but everybody that saw that at the time remembers it. I do remember after that, Louisville Slugger and uh, the other big manufacturer, I forget at the time, they're no longer in business, then started putting marks on bats where you could put your oh, is that right? up mm. to that. Yeah, as a result of that. Yeah. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. 92 KQRS.